Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. Spring is in the air. There's probably some critters on your fruit trees and today I'm going to show you how to formulate and apply your own dormant oil spray to clean up those trees for maximum harvest. Stay tuned. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Thanks for tuning into this episode, guys. We're gonna formulate and apply our own recipe for dormant oil spray onto fruit trees. A lot of commercial dormant oil sprays have kerosene or petroleum-based oils in them, which are really hard on the environment to extract or manufacture. And then they can be really hard on the tree and on the soil where the spray lands as well. So we wanna use something a lot safer, but equally effective that you can formulate yourself. You'll be saving money and a lot kinder to the environment at the same time. Three ingredients really simply put together with water are going to make all the difference. So this recipe that we're going to use today I know works really well on at least five different types of fruit trees because they're the very five types that I have on my property varying ages of old and new. It works on crab apple and apple, on plum, pear and quince. Those are the five that I know it works on. I'm also certain it works on currants because they need and uh, are challenged by the same problems with pests. What do you need to do this after? All your pruning. When all your pruning's done, it's the right time. And what do you need to do it before? Before flowers come out or buds start bursting on your tree. This one's getting really close because it's almost ready to start popping. I want to be able to kill the insects and the eggs of the insects that have overwintered, but I don't want to in any way harm the pollinators that are going to come and pollinate this tree and help it set fruit. So let's be good to those trees, get the insects we don't want, and care for the insects that we do want to come and pollinate these beautiful flowering fruit trees. So let's get into the recipe. This recipe, guys, is so simple. I'm using a two-gallon sprayer and the main ingredient's water. So I've already filled it up almost the, to the two-gallon mark. Two gallons is about eight liters for those of you in metric land. And at this point, just three more ingredients. Now, because I've got two gallons in here, my recipe is based on one gallon. Uh, for each gallon, you're gonna use a cup of veggie oil. I've got canola oil. So I've got two gallons in here, so I'm gonna use two cups. The key to the oil, especially in the recipe, is it's going to coat the insect or the egg of the insect that's overwintering and it's going to shut down its respiration. It's basically going to suffocate it. So there's your veggie oil, one cup to every one gallon. Then baking soda. I've got one tablespoon for each gallon. So again, I'm emptying out the box, but I'll have just enough. Because I'm doing two gallons, I'm doing two tablespoons. What's the baking soda gonna do? It's gonna eliminate fungal spores from spreading, which would be in the bark or on the trunk of the tree at the branches or the notches of the trunk to the branch. And then finally, pure Castile soap. Now I'm using Dr. Bronner's. It's very safe, it's non-toxic, it's derived entirely from vegetable oils. So the clear thing here is that commercial dormant oil sprays often have uh, kerosene or petroleum based products in them which are very harmful to the environment not just in applying them but also in manufacturing and refining them so just one tablespoon of this for every gallon so again I'm going to use two tablespoons of that so as a review for every gallon of water I'm using a cup of veggie oil a tablespoon of baking soda and a tablespoon of pure Castile soap which fun fact Castile soap originates from a region by the same name in Spain. Then once you've got it in your sprayer you want to shake it up and I'll do that once it's sealed. This type of a sprayer has a threaded top so this threads down and then you start once the threads are closed to basically pump it up and down like an old school bicycle pump. Now again I'm doing a two gallon batch and for this I'm going to do probably a dozen or more trees and there's an adjustable spray wand on the top that I can do like a pressure focus laser spray like on a hose which I don't want to do or a mist spray which is going to nicely cover all of the bark surfaces which is what I'm going to use. I'm going to pump this up until the pressure is there and then it's going to spray and before I get spraying I'm going to want to make sure and do something. First of all protect my eyes so no soap and oil is going in my eyes and if you don't want soap and oil on your clothing you're going to want to put on some protective clothing maybe some coveralls the key here as well is to apply it well to your trees you're going to want a day when it's calm and not windy at all so look for a calm day protective gear 
pump up the pressure. Now, if you don't want to do a big batch, let's say you just have one or two tiny trees, use a little spray bottle, maybe 500 mil, half a liter, something like that. And that should be enough. Just a few cups of product should cover a few small trees, no problem. I'm just going to pump this sucker up and then I'll just show you how the mister works. It's really simple. You can hear it building up pressure, right? It's already starting to resist. And as it resists pressure, I know that I got pressure. And then as I get in close, see, just starts to spray a little mist like that. Just make sure you're downwind and best of all that there's no wind when you spray and you are good to go. Beautiful thing. Basically, I'm going to go on a tree and I'm going to look at every spot where there's surface area of bark and I'm going to spray it down. I'm basically doing a fine mist coating over the whole tree. So wherever the tree is really old and here you see there's moss and fissures. I'm trying to completely soak and cover it so that all the bark is saturated with this dormant oil spray. And as a result, it's going to suffocate the eggs, the bugs and attack any fungal spores that are on it as well. You just got to be patient and work away doing it. And probably in about five minutes, I'll be done this tree and go to the next one. You know what the beautiful thing is using this uh, pure Castile soap that's peppermint. It smells like I'm kind of brushing my teeth while I'm doing this. It's a beautiful smell. That wasn't very difficult, was it guys? We've shown you a simple three ingredients plus water recipe. We've told you when to spray after and when to spray before and how to apply the dormant oil. And we're giving you something safe and non-toxic to yourself and the environment around you, but it'll ideally laser focus address the pests and the eggs of the pests and the fungal spores that are on your overwintering trees so they can get an awesome rapid fire start into the spring, into flowering, into pollination, have a great fruit season with as little disease as possible. Enjoy the harvest. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video on YouTube. If you're not yet a subscriber, please like and subscribe and share the wealth. You'll get a regular email in your inbox letting you know every time there's another tip that's hopeful, helpful, and healthy. Till next time. If you've ever wanted to grow veggies yourself, but you're not sure how, I'll take you to that place. I'm Sustainable Stace. I've got this awesome year-long class from scoping out where you're gonna grow your garden right through to harvesting it all and then planting fall and winter veggies and garlic and caring for soil and seeds and everything in between. I call it getbackyardabundance.com and if you check out the link below, it's easy to follow a whole year of classes online to take you from veggie curious to veggie confident. Getbackyardabundance.com, check it out.